Well, that was a pretty awesome morning. We got up at five o'clock. Um, on the way out, I got to stop and I spent about an hour just hanging out with the wild horses on here on Easter Island and um, just shooting stills under the moonlight. It was absolutely incredible. And uh, now we've popped out. Well, then we came out here for the sunrise, which was pretty funny. There were The crowd has kind of dwindled now, but there were a lot of people here uh, about half an hour ago. This morning was a great opportunity to use uh, two uh, incredible features of the Olympus cameras. Um, the live composite was great. I have been trying to get uh, a ball of light in front, or in this case behind, uh, some moai for some time. And I came to the realization yesterday that if you come out for sunrise, um, it will work. But the amazing thing is we didn't actually get in until the sunrise was well underway and there were a lot of people. So getting through the gate and in here was really interesting. But I got around behind the moai, which was great because um, there were all these people here, but behind the moai, of course, there was no one. So I got in behind there and it was getting light very fast, but using live composite, uh, I was uh, able to do like really long exposures, 60, 60, 70, 80 second exposures while doing the light painting. So it was incredible. I use it for my light painting a lot, but in those moments, uh, I don't do every image that I do with live composite. But in this instance, it's a no-brainer because you just can't do a 60-second exposure when the sun is coming up. It doesn't happen, but with live comps, it allows me to do that. The other thing we did this morning was how to play with uh, live time. And, you know, in this instance, live time was wonderful because the, 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 the sun had come up, the sunset had happened. It wasn't really that much of a sunset, but I wanted to get some movement in the cloud. But the light was changing really fast. So what I did is I popped a variable ND filter on the camera and um, then used live time Lifetime is a feature uh, of the Olympus cameras that I knew existed, but I didn't start using it until it got me out of a real bind. I was stuck on an island uh, and had left my remote. So I traditionally use a remote on top of the camera uh, with, a, uh, with a trigger. And I had actually uh, forgotten them, but I, because I was on an island and I was there for three days shooting, I was kind of stuck. And so I started using Lifetime, and what I realized is not only is it great for getting you out of a bind, but it just gives you this absolutely incredible freedom um, from uh, another device that needs a battery, another device that goes wrong. Uh, it, it allows you in camera to do all those things. It gives you freedom again. Uh, so yeah, Lifetime is wonderful. And what it does is it allows us to see our bulb image as it's building on the camera. It gives us 24 opportunities during our exposure to see that image. 
So if we're doing a very short exposure, so this morning I was probably 30 seconds at the most, I get the opportunity to see that image every one or two seconds, which means that I'm getting really fast updates as to what's happening. Now, if it's nighttime and we're doing a long exposure, say three or four minutes, we only want to be getting to see the image maybe every five or 10 or sometimes even 15 seconds. Because if we use up our 24 reveals of the image, it doesn't show you anymore and it means you're just guessing. And we don't never want to be guessing with photography. Uh, and with this uh, feature of the Olympus cameras, we don't need to be guessing anymore. So let's get into a bit of live time. I'll show you some different times that I've used it on the trip. I've used it a bunch and I use it a heap uh, when I'm out doing landscape photography. Not so much with light painting. I tend to use life composite for that. Yeah, let's go get into it and take a look. All right, this morning's a fantastic opportunity to use live time. <laughs> We're down, at, uh, down in front of some moai. We've, we've passed through sunrise. Uh, it wasn't that spectacular, but I had the opportunity to get around the back of the moai and do some live comp work. But um, anyway, before it gets too bright, I want to show you something really cool. So there's not really a very pinky sort of a sky behind the moai, but we do have some nice clouds and I want to get nice movement through the clouds here. So what I've done is I've put an ND filter on the front of the uh, camera, the variable ND filter, I've cranked that up a bit. We're at F16 now. I need to, it's gonna get bright, it's gonna get bright pretty quick. So in the menu, I've got our, re our reveals happening every two seconds. Uh, remember, we get 24 opportunities to have a look at our exposure as it's going. So, so here we go, I'm gonna okay out of that and let's get our live time started. So I've pressed the shutter button, and here we go. It's starting to, it's starting to get a bit of light into the scene. Uh, you can see here we've seen uh, four of our reveals. We're getting a bit of movement in the cloud, which is nice. And of course, we've got our histogram down the bottom left-hand corner here, just so we can check uh, that it's not, too, it's not getting overexposed. Now I'm, can, I'm seeing a little bit of the front of the Moai. So they're starting to brighten up a little bit, which is gorgeous. Movement in the cloud, which I love. You know, live time is fantastic, especially when the conditions are changing so fast. Now, here's an interesting thing. We've seen 20 of our reveals, 21, 22. Now, when it gets to 24, uh, we stop getting to see what's happening. So you can see now it's gone away and we're kind of guessing. So what that means is I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna change, uh, I'm gonna go into the menu and I'm gonna change to four seconds, how often we get uh, to see the images. And you'll see what happens. So I'm starting it again, and, you'll, and when we get to four seconds, uh, we'll get our first look at the exposure. Looking nice, there is actually still a little bit of color in the sky, which is nice, you know, we can bring that out in, um... now there are, there are some more, there are some more moai to the left here, uh, but, um, I can't really get too close to, uh, I can't really get in that position because there's a lot of people here. Um, awesome, that's looking so good. Wow. I want to be able to see the faces of the Moai. I'm just waiting, looking at the screen. When the light is changing as fast as it's changing now, you know, live time, uh, live time takes away all of the guesswork, which is so good. It's starting to look really nice and creamy. It's nice that the grass is green. Sometimes of the year here, it's really brown. So looking good. We're starting to get a little hot up in the sky up here, and we can see that on the histogram. So I'm gonna stop it there. And I'm gonna have a look. And I just wanna see, yeah, we've got heaps of detail in the Moai's head, so that's great. And it also, you know, the other thing with this is it allows you to experiment a little bit. The next thing I want to try is I want to see if I can just get the Moai in silhouette um, and a heap of movement in the cloud. So let's try this. Let's do this. Let's, because um, I like that one. Let's stop that there. I'm going to drop my ISO down to low. And I'm going to give it a little more on the ND filter.
All right, let's see how we go with that. Cool. So as you can see, the very first exposure, it's just dark as. So what it means is that I can stop it when we get a lot of movement in the cloud. And I want to just keep them in silhouette. And the neat thing is, is it'll, it is pretty windy, which means that um, we are getting a bit of movement in the cloud. All right, the sun has just popped out from behind the clouds over there. So that may give us a little more color in the clouds. So see that we've got exactly what I want. Really nice movement in the cloud. I've got a bit of vignetting up here from the, uh, from the ND filter, which is a bit of a shame. Variable ND filters do that sometimes. So that's exactly the look I was after. These guys in silhouette. Looking good, heaps of movement in the clouds now. So that's exactly what I wanted. Now the sun has just popped up, so I'm just gonna stop that. And I wanna try and get rid of this vignetting on the variable ND. I've just made the ND field a little bit darker because we have got a little colour back in the sky. Awesome. So live time, you know, it's a fantastic tool for, for you know, being able to play with your long exposures when you know, time is of the essence, you know, and, and the colours are changing. It's really nice. I love this blue and white. So I'll stop that. The other night I was here, uh, albeit out by the fence, um, shooting uh, shooting time lapse um, and you'll see some of the time lapses under the moon were just beautiful it, it just allows you uh, a sort of a freedom you know and the moonlight is just this amazing soft thing and there was a bit of cloud cover which meant that uh, it was like a big soft box which is just gorgeous and so behind behind the Moai here we had beautiful rolling clouds um, which was amazing All right, so we've got a couple of days left here on Easter Island. Um, it's been a mountain of fun. We're going up to the, uh, just behind us up here is the quarry today. Uh, and the weather's got to be just perfect for it. Although the weather is always perfect for everything here on Easter Island. It's like four seasons in one day, which is amazing. And uh, I've been using the Olympus gear heaps. Uh, I've used all of the lenses that I brought. Uh, using all the bodies, even the EM10 Mark III and my EM5 are getting used. Uh, which is wonderful. And of course the great thing is that when you're out, um, you know, when you're out uh, on a, in, a, in a place like this, in and out of the car, walking around, you know, I've got, um, 
you know, this is my camera bag. Uh, and I've had, although it's quite a big camera bag, I've had four bodies and six lenses in that bag the entire time we've been here. Plus audio gear, two tripods, the whole lot. So it's been amazing being able to just lug around such a huge amount of gear and relatively easily. You know, I'm an old man now with a, with a bad back and um, you know, that is a joy of the Olympus gear. It's just the, the punch that you get for the mass uh, is just brilliant, you know. So I love it. Uh, on this trip it's proven to be absolutely stunning and we've got a whole lot more to do.